So people didn't want the monarchy system. They wanted to have freedom, they want to have a republic, basically. They hijacked the revolution. We did our opposition, did everything to uh, overthrow the Shah. University students demonstrating in Tehran, shouting death to the Shah, pledge allegiance to the Islamic movement of the Ayatollahs. The number killed in Tehran since the beginning of the month is probably well over 100. But people in this crowd were saying and believing 7,000 had been killed. When the revolution happened in 1979, which was not an Islamic revolution, as people sometimes say, it, there was a broad base of um, students, activists, communists, socialists, workers. Um, there were religious people too, but it sort of got hijacked, you know, by this strong religious leader that everyone decided would be a good sort of symbol to unite under. Ayatollah Khomeini. 43 years they've been ruling the country now. So I can say since they started, for people who were like from the last government and they chose to stay in Iran other than leaving, they all got ex executed in jails. I was nine years old, I was going to school, I seen people getting hanged in the middle of like, you know, in fucking the the roundabouts and shit. We're just here with people sending a message saying, Mag, Bar, Khomeini. Mag, Bar, Khomeini is death, death, to, death the, to the leader. Death to the leader. <laughs> This comes on the back of the 2019 protests where, you know, they outed the internet and killed 1,500 people. That comes on the back of the protests in 2017 of the girls of, the girls of Revolution Street, they were called. That came on the back of other protests. That came on the back of the quashing of the Green Wave movement in 2009. So every time something happens, it feeds what goes on. All the revolution starts from one point. One brutal killing and Massa's hair was the last straw. There is a brutal, brutal crackdown. If you watch some of the videos coming out and they must just be a tiny percentage of, you know, what's being filmed and what's really going on. They're deeply distressing. You know, the amount of young, young girls, not just girls, also men, who've just been killed, shot. If I show you some graphical videos from, people from the age of 17 oh, yeah. Look, to 19, 20 are the most of the people who are actually active on the roads and actually room. going in front of police's forces, yeah, morality man, police's faces. Road, yeah. Look, this is a guy, this is a guy who got shot in the head the back home. Um, and these videos come back, you know? They, they, they say they say only 35 people have died. Is that no, a lot no, more, more people. Double, in one day, night, two years night. ago, in one, my own cousin he got executed in in the prison. My own cousin. Search him up. He got they shut down the internet on the people. They kill 1,500 people in, in a day, in and no silence. one knows where they are. Yes. Just some names that they, they know they that got missing. They 100%. take the people. They take the body. The they didn't even give the body back to their families. families. No. They say we don't know where your son is. You, yeah, you for example, if I go like missing now, you are my brother, yeah? And you go to the police, oh, he's been missing, and the police, sorry, we don't know where he is, we can't find him. The stories of the families trying to get these bodies, the authorities lying to them, the authorities then stealing the bodies after they've given them and burying them secretly because they don't want the graves to become these flashpoints of protest, you know? It's the trauma that they're causing people is really extraordinary and despite this people are not going home
they seem not to have any center. They don't seem to have a leader. They don't seem to be centrally organized. So even though the regime keeps on shutting and slowing down the internet in order to stop partly communication between people so that they're not able to plan um, demonstrations, they're going on anyway. Um, and I think, I feel like they're spontaneous outbursts of utter fury. That's it. People cannot take it anymore. The youngsters, the, this generation, they cannot take it anymore. They're not asking for much. They just ask for freedom. Everybody can live together freely with the scarf, without the scarf. I show my hair the way I like it. You don't like it, you don't show it. I don't bother. I'm not going to bother you. We're all together. The planet is for all of us. Sometimes when I look at these girls and I hear their voices and I hear how fed up they are, they're so furious. They're so furious. They're just furious. And I think, but it's not just their fury. They're carrying every generation's anger and fury and humiliation and indignity and abuse at the hands of this regime. People are fed up with when I'm talking about abuse it's not just about you know the hijab this is about the economy this is about the resources of our country being stolen from the people we should be one of the richest countries on earth the majority of Iranians live on under $200 a month you know the middle class has been destroyed the gap between the poor the ordinary the ordinary have become poor the gap between them and the rich has massively widened since the Shah's time. We did not have the kind of wealth that you see in Iran in the Shah's time. They just, it just didn't exist. Iran is one of the richest countries in the world. You have all the oil, it got 8% of the oil in the world. Yeah, so all that money doesn't come to us. It doesn't go to Iranian people. It goes to countries like Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, Lebanon. Pakistan, Yemen. Afghanistan, everywhere. Just even like, well, who do you think will give, Iran Iran is known because of these government. Yeah, Iran is known for the first terrorist country in the world. But our people are not like that. We want peace, we want freedom, we want like peace. just like you. Yeah. You know, but we don't have that. Do you think, do you think if I have freedom in my country, I would have come live in, in your country? Yeah. Like obviously I don't I don't want to be here, you know. Yes. I've got family back home. here. Yes, I've, people, I wanna be yes, home, I wanna people, live there, I wanna be in my own country, you know, I wanna be proud of where I come from and you know it's just mad. Iran has a big invite in the Middle East. So if problem with the immigration and refugees gonna be sorted as local people from Afghanistan, they're gonna go back. Because Iran now meddling in all countries. In Iraq, Syria, they have funded Hezbollah, Hamas, all the terrorist radical groups. So once we get rid of the Iranian regime, that means we're getting rid of all these radical groups. You have a peaceful Middle East, all refugees, all immigrants go back to their own country, they can build their own country. This is not about Islam. This is not at all about Islam. The Iranian people are not saying we don't want to be Muslims. They're not burning the hijab because it's a symbol of Islam. They're burning the, the, the headscarf because... It's, it's a symbol of religious devotion that has been taken by the state and used instead as a tool to oppress half of the population. That's what they're objecting to. They're objecting to oppression. They're objecting to abuse. <laughs> example inside Iran they force women to cover their hair and if they don't they get killed like massa their own children in UK if you go on TikTok I'm sure I can show it to you in TikTok and social media their own kids their own daughters are naked basically I mean with bikini next to the beach and so it, where does, that's hypocrisy 
People are fed up because they're disgusted that they get shot at or beaten to death on the street for the sake of having some hair showing. But actually, the mullahs and their cronies have mansions in LA and their daughters and granddaughters are wearing bikinis, are totally redone and are posting, you know, half-nude pictures of themselves to their sort of hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. It's the hypocrisy of it that people can't take anymore. It relies on systematic change and the international community coming together. Um, that's where my faith lies, because I think there needs to be much more than just protesting and some news coverage every now and again that then fades off into the distance. And it's things like the Black Lives Matter movement is a great example where so many other murders had happened. It takes one but it takes everyone to stand behind that and actually have the courage and bravery to stand up and have allyship with one another. I'm Iranian, but other people are not here. They are still coming here to stand up with Iranian people in recognition of the um, unjust system. What is going on in Iran right now is the front line of feminism. I don't understand how so many people define themselves as feminists and intersectional feminists or whatever, and they're not out there speaking for Iranian women. Um, you know, we have LGBTQ activists in jail in Iran, like two that I know of who were taken for speaking out. And where is their community in the world showing up for them? You know, it's really a big puzzle. It's amazing, the silence. Um, and I don't really know why. Genuinely, I don't know why. Because... On a human level, it's relevant to all of us. You know, all the non-Iranians, we need the support right now. Literally, we gain at some point, it's a revolution that's happening. Uh, revolution happened, a lot of people have to die. I'm sorry to say this, but for a revolution to happen and change in the government, and, and, yeah, yeah, a lot of people change. have to get There is blood in every And revolution. me personally, I would, I would take that sacrifice, not gonna lie. And I do believe in the youngsters in Iran, yeah. and we are all behind them. We're all behind them. It's enough of dictatorship. Life matters, freedom matters for Iran. Thank you.